Welcome back to another video on the basics of Glide and in a previous video we had a little bit of a look at an overview of the tool, we considered some of the uh, characteristics that make it unique and explored what it means by a progressive web app rather than building a native mobile app. Now in this video we're going to dive into how you can actually use the tool. First of all beginning with the database, we're going to have a look at the database, some of the different data types that you've got and just look at how you can start to put together a real live example app. So I'm going to hit new app here and um, the immediate question I get is, do I want to use Google Sheets or Glide Tables? Now, I touched on this in the last video, but Glide is essentially pretty famous for the fact that you could take a Glide, uh, sorry, you could take a Google Sheet, um, a spreadsheet essentially filled with whatever data you wanted, and then you could use Glide to turn that into a fully-fledged mobile app. Recently, however, Glide has added the ability to use their own tables functionality, and um, it just lets you do everything within Glide itself rather than having to rely on an external service or tool. I'm going to select that. I prefer it personally. And uh, immediately we're going to be taken into the interface just as we had a look at last time. Now, what I want to build here as a bit of a demonstration is a workout app. Um, and the reason I want to do that is when I was going through creating the um, the syllabus or the, the curriculum for this course, uh, I spoke to somebody who is hoping to use this to create their own workout app. And so I thought, that seems like a perfect example of something that I could build in Glide. So we're going to use that as an example. I'm going to keep it mega, mega basic. I'm sure uh, that person, when they come to build their own workout app, uh, is going to have to create a lot more complexity but we're going to keep it pretty basic and just show off what Glide can do. Now, one of the things I probably mentioned in the previous video as well is that essentially everything in Glide starts out as a repeating data list. Uh, the reason it says there are no items here yet is because this screen that we're looking at is, in essence, a repeating data list, except it's on top of a database which currently has no items left in it. So let's go and have a little look and see if we can fix that. So... When we come in here, um, we've got a couple of databases already created for us, or database tables created for us. Number one, we've got users, and that's all pretty obvious. You've got the usual, my name's in there. My email, which I'm sure is going to get spammed uh, once this launches, is in there too. Um, and we've also got a things table. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll probably just rename that, actually, to begin with. And uh, I'm going to change that. Oops, that's the wrong place. Uh, I'm going to change that to workouts. And I'm going to take these columns and just delete them so that I can get to the columns that I want. And delete date. And uh, we'll leave owner in. And we'll talk about relationships in a little second when it comes to owner, etc. But what we're essentially going to map out here is we're going to have workouts. Um, and we're also going to have another table called, uh, let's call that um, exercise. Well, clearly uh, Glide generates random names for new tables that it creates, which is why that says uh, indigo float, throat even. And uh, I'm just going to change that to exercises. At least I hope that's why it says indigo throat. Um, so again, Glide is just going to create these um, these columns for me. Uh, so what we're going to do here, if we think about you know what a workout app is, now you might be somebody who uh, works out a lot, you might not be interested, but um, you get workout apps and essentially what happens is you have a workout, you have a list of your different workouts on them, maybe the one you did yesterday, the one you're going to do tomorrow, whatever. Um, typically when people do a workout, they're going to target a certain day, uh, or, or sorry, they're going to target um, a certain body area on a certain day, like one day they'll work out on their chest, the next day they'll do legs, the next day they'll do arms. And then typically, um, because it's a certain day, they'll then have a kind of set, I guess, exercises that they'll do. Like if it's arms day, then you might do a bicep curl, or if it's chest day, you might do a bench press, etc. And um, we're going to try and replicate that in here because what most apps will do is just let you pull up a list of your exercises for that specific workout, and then they'll let you just specify how many reps you did. So, okay, you did a bicep curl, how many times did you lift the weight? Was it five, was it 10? You know, how many sets was it, etc. We'll simplify it. We'll just have um, three different types of exercise. Uh, so we'll rename this to type. We'll have three different types of exercise, um, and uh, uh, we'll call it chest, legs, and arms, let's say, and then we'll also do three exercises within those different types. So, you know, for arms to do bicep curl, lateral raise, etc. So let me show you how this works. Um, now, first of all, as, as you notice when I went in there, um, I immediately have the option to edit a column at any time. Column, again, just another word for field. Glide has a lot of column types. Now, you'll see all the basics here, and you might be thinking, well, what do I mean there's a lot? Well, let me show you. When I come in here, 
and I add another column. If I click this time, I've still got those basic column item uh, options, you know, all the stuff we're used to seeing, like number, date, time, etc. But you also have a few other funny ones in here. Now, a relation's pretty obvious. That's going to be a relationship. And I'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a minute because Glide's approach to relationships is um, interesting, very different, let's say. Uh, you've got various other things here. You know, we've got an if then else. So you can actually calculate an, an if statement within a data field. You can use a lookup um, to look up data from a relationship. Uh, you can do math. You can do a roll up. You can do a joined list. So there's all sorts of different bits and pieces here. And it actually scrolls down. You've got a row ID as well. Um, we're not going to worry so much about that for the moment. What we're going to do from now is just create a really simple text field. Uh, so we're going to call that exercise, oops, exercise A. Just had to check I'd actually spelt that right there. <laughs> we'll now do exercise B and we'll do exercise C. And as I say, I'm just going to keep this table really simple. If you were building a real workout app, you'd probably have an infinite list using an array. Uh, for example, I'm pretty sure this does arrays as well somewhere. Uh, ah, I'm sure, it, I think I think that's what a, um, a joined list does as an array. Um, but so you probably have an array where you can add as many different workouts as you like, or um, you know you would just have lots more options. But we're going to keep it really, really simple. So we're going to say we've got chest day, uh, or chest type of exercises. We've got leg. Uh, oops, I don't know that's maybe because I'm not hitting enter. Uh, and we've got arms. So we've got chest day, legs day, arms day. Uh, I appear to be struggling to type. Sorry about that. Um, so for chest, uh, oh now I'm going to have to prove my working out knowledge. So we're going to have. A bench press, that's a pretty obvious one. Pectoral, no, oh, pectoral fly. I'm pretty sure that's a type of chest workout. Um, and we'll do a push up, which technically that's chest as well, I think, kind of. For legs, we'll do a calf raise. Uh, we will do a uh, quad raise. I don't know if that's a thing. I'm sure there'll be somebody who's a gym fan here laughing at that. Uh, we'll do a calf raise, a quad raise. Oh, and let's do a lunge. I know that's a thing. We'll call it lunges. Um, and then we'll just make up some more exercises here. We're not really making them up, but you know what I mean. Bicep curl, uh, shoulder press, which is when you press the weights above you. And uh, a lateral raise, which is when you kind of raise your arms like a bird raises its wings or something like that. Um, so I've just made a really, really basic a little kind of table here. Um, so we've got, you know, the type of workout, we've got the exercises related to that. Um, and the reason for that is we're then going to have a series of workouts and every workout is going to be using only one of those different types. And then based on whether you pick chest, legs or arms, it's going to pull through, you know, um, let's say a bench press or a pectoral fry, whatever it might be. So this is just, again, we've just used really, really basic columns here. In the workout field, however, we're going to use slightly more advanced columns. So immediately we've got name. I don't really need that, so I'm going to delete that, which leaves us just with owner. Um, again, ignore that one for just a second. That's an email field. I'll come back to, to that. Um, let's just put some of the basics in first. So... Um, one of the columns that, that uh, Glide has that's pretty cool is this row ID. Um, and what that will do is just generate a unique, uh, I guess, a unique identifier for this specific row. And it will do it for every row, which means you've always got a unique way of finding this specific workout or whatever row you happen to be creating for your own app. Um, and so we've got owner. The next thing that we're going to have to do then is start to explore um, the relation. In fact, let me put a date in first, just so we know when the workout is. I'm trying to leave relationships as close to the end as la uh, as possible. Um, so for we can kind of select how you want to display this. I'm just going to say we don't really want to know our workout time. That's been a little bit pedantic. So I'm just going to put day, uh, different formats. You kind of have to play about these to see what short, medium, long is. Um, but uh, I'm just going to stick with medium because I know what that is. And then I can do I can do a workout date of like uh, what date are we on today? Seven April. 20, oops, 2021, uh, and you'll see the minute I put that in there, um, Glide recognizes that that's me just started to create a new row of data and it automatically generates a row ID. Let's look at what else we've got. Um, so we're going to go ahead and look at the relation field this time and uh, this works quite differently from pretty much every app builder out there. It definitely took me, when I first started trying to learn this, it took me a little bit to get my head around it. Um, but 
I think it made more sense when they worked with Google Sheets. Um, I absolutely love Glide, but this is a one part of Glide that, that I struggle with to understand why, why it works this way. I think it made sense when they had Google Sheets. I think it makes less sense when you've got a traditional database view. Um, but let me show you what I mean. So when you configure a relationship, you give that a, you know, a column name. So I'm going to call this, you know, exercises relation. And um, you, what you actually have to do here is pick a row of data on this particular um, a table that is going to match a row of data on another one. And what I mean by that is I cannot, this is not just a field where I can say, okay, this is a relationship to exercises and I'll type in what the relationship is here. I've got to say, this field is just acknowledging that a relationship might or might not exist. I then have to pick a column on this table that will relate to a column on another table. So let me let me show you what I mean. Um, so I, if I cancel that for a second, right, I'm going to create, uh, we'll say, you know, um, exercise type, okay? And we'll just make that a text field. <clears throat> and we'll say the exercise type today is chest. Uh, yesterday it was legs, etc. Let me go back and create that relationship field and I'll show you what I mean. So if I do exercise relation as my title, and if I go to relation, now I can select that exercise type, and then I can select the second drop down, and it's gonna let me browse through the, all the fields on each of my other tables. This is where you actually create, create the relation. And what I need to do here is select type, because what it's gonna do is it's gonna match a row based on this field here to this field here. It doesn't let me just type in, you know, to this one, whatever I like. You know, I can't I can't type in that. I'm trying to hit my key. It won't let me type anything in. Instead, what I've got to do is go arms. And then that will automatically pull through the relation. So that now knows, based on this field matching this field, it knows which row to match to which. So, you know, when you do it, it starts to make a little bit of sense. It just definitely takes your head uh, you know, a little bit to get round versus some of the other app builders out there. But once you get it, it makes a lot of sense and you could argue it might even be more powerful. Um, but one of the things that you can then do is you can start to pull through a specific data based on that relationship. So let's say I wanted to show exercise A. Now I don't want to spe I don't want to let the user specify exercise A for the workout. The user will already have picked chest, uh, legs, or arms based on uh, you know whatever my interface is going to look like, and I've built that relationship uh, in the database. So now what I'm going to do is a lookup field. Now you get these in a lot of different no code tools. You probably have seen them if you've watched many of my videos on Airtable. Um, but when I go into configuration here, I can essentially say, okay, pick whatever field I like, and that is going to look up that field based on the row that's selected and it's going to pull through that information so okay so let, let's look at that we're saying that this uh, particular row is related to the chest row um, of the exercises table and the exercise a lookup is bench press well if i go back and if i check that yep chest is the bench press legs exercise a is the calf raise and of course in arms it's bicep curl which pulls through there as well and I can, you know, I could do that again. I could say, all right, well, that's pretty cool. Let's see if it works for exercise B. Hint to the reader, it absolutely will. And there you go. So I've got pectoral fly for chest. I've got quad raise for legs. I've got shoulder press for arms. And subsequently, if I look through there and look at uh, exercise B, pectoral fly, quad raise, shoulder press for arms. So it matches up perfectly. Um, I'm just going to add another column as well for exercise C. Uh, we'll just pull all of these through and then I'll show you how we can make use of them. Go we'll exercise C, done. And um, essentially what, what we've now got is a data table that pulls through, um, you know, our workout date. So when actually is that day? It was the 5th of April, 2021 here. Um, we've got exercise type in terms of chest, legs, arms, etc. Get exercise relationship. You know, we've pulled through a, a ton of different data here. Now, what we're going to do with our workout is for every workout, we want to know what date was the workout, what type of workout did we do, which we've got, what exercises we do. But for each exercise, we also want to know the reps. And so, even though I've pulled this data through as a lookup and not actually, I guess, technically like saved it or created it in this table, I'm going to add for each exercise column, I'm going to add a reps or repetitions. Um, so we'll do a reps exercise 
uh, or just do reps A, so that's for exercise A, and I can set the position here, um, that is just another way of saying do you want an integer or a decimal, and if you do want a decimal, to how many places, um, we're going to do position 1, and by the way, just to highlight, this bit that says column is user specific, so I'll touch on this in a bit more in a second, but Glide thinks about relationships to users quite differently from most tools, and so um, <clears throat> you can have rows which are you know widely available to anybody, but then have specific columns within those rows which are only visible by the user. So you could have a bunch of, um, let's say you could have an app with restaurants in it. You could then have uh, you know a, a, a table of restaurants. Each restaurant, uh, each row in the restaurant's table has like the picture of the restaurant, the name of the restaurant, you know, address, etc. And then you could have a notes field, a user's private notes field, and you can set that to be user specific. And that means instead of going off and creating this other like notes table with a relationship between it, what you can now do is when the user browses and looks at a specific restaurant, they can take notes on each restaurant. And it's, it's visible only to them. Every user has their own unique data, their own unique notes data in that column. Um, and it's just a, a pretty good way of kind of building, I, I guess, private bits of data and without having to go and create all these different tables, all these different relationships. Sometimes it works for you, sometimes it doesn't, just depending on your use case. Anyway, cracking on uh, with where I was. So we'll do rep A, uh, we'll quickly fire through rep B. This is the worst bit in asking cast, isn't it? When you've got to watch the presenter do the same thing over and over again just so he can get his demo working. And we'll do reps C. And you might have noticed, if you are paying attention, still, that I wrote rep there rather than reps. And of course, I am pernickety, so I'm going to correct it. So what we've just done here is created a number field. Now, we can actually enter numbers into this. We can say 30 reps. Okay, that'd be a bit extreme. Uh, we can say 10 reps, you know, we can say 20 reps, whatever. If you were going to build your own um, version of this, then you would probably um, you would probably also have sets. So typically, what you'll do if you're exercising again, you'll probably know this, but you'll usually like if you're going to do a bicep curl, you do five, then you'll wait, then you do five, then you wait again, and you do five, and so that is three sets of five. Um, I'm not going to bother building that in because I'm not trying to build a workout app really. I'm just kind of trying to show you how this tool works. So I did say I would expand a little bit more on ownership. I've talked about how you do column to column ownership. Um, but typically the way that Glide will handle, uh, you know, user owning generic data type relationships is by having a field where you've got the users, some sort of detail of the user. So let's say um, the user's email address. Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, let's say the user's email address, we get nylon no and we'll just uh, replicate it here as well so it all shows up. But essentially, um, you would put that in that field. That doesn't create ownership just yet. What I've now got to do is create another relation field, and I'll call this a uh, owner relation. You could also call it user relation, whatever you want. Create user. We'll say take the owner field match that up to users to the email field. And there you go, that will immediately pull through Nile Freighter, um, you know, as kind of the first rule in uh, this. So we've just created a nice functional database here. You know, we've got all our workout data, we've got relationships running through it. It's related to users. We've got exercises in there, which is just generic data that's feeding the workouts. Now what we can start to think about is going and actually using that in a uh, an actual list or an actual UI. Um, we'll jump onto that in the next video and I'll start to show you how you can turn that into a repeating data list and add various different elements to control or look at that data or otherwise work with it as well.